Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and I'm a full-time reseller on both eBay and Amazon. I have been for the last 15 years or so. And today I got scammed again. Although in my defense, it wasn't really scammed as much as it was screwed over because this person did not set out to scam me. It just sort of ended up that I lost money on this sale. This is a continuation of my last video where I talked about how I got scammed. In that case, probably actually scammed. I sent them the item. They claimed it didn't work. They opened a payment dispute with their bank and their bank sided with them because I could not provide proof that the item worked. And so I made a video explaining, this is what happened to me. You really need to have proof of your electronics working so that you don't get scammed going forward. It was basically a PSA, but it happened again. <laughs> And this time it was not on an electronic item. There was literally nothing. I, I literally don't think there was anything I could have done differently and I still lost. So in this case, I don't know if it's a PSA or if it's just commiserating about how it be sometimes with online sales. But anyway, let's get into the story. Roll the intro. So first off, this actually takes place on Bonanza and which if you're not familiar with Bonanza, it's just an eBay mirror. So if you have an eBay store, you can sort of clone it over to Bonanza and then you get your Bonanza sales via Google shopping. So when people like search a specific item and you see those little sponsored results for places where you can buy it, that's the best way to get your eBay items in that sort of Google shopping category. But I really wonder how different it would have been if this item had sold on eBay where it was originally listed. I don't know that anything would have really been different because I'm confused as to why this didn't go in my favor in the first place. I actually mentioned this buyer in my previous video where I go sourcing and I found some Physoderm soaps at the Goodwill bins. They're little trial size bars of soap. Um, if you don't know, regular size, non-vintage bars of Physoderm soap are a bolo. Like you can sell them for a good amount of money. I sold these two trial size bars of soap for $20. And soap has no moving parts, no anything that could really be disputed. The photos showed all sides of the item so that you could tell that the soaps were sealed. You could see exactly what size the soaps were and you could see that they were vintage. Like what other information could I have possibly left out? So the buyer opens a case with Bonanza and says, I didn't know they were trial size bars of soap, even though the words trial size are directly on the item themselves, as well as in three different places, the actual ounce of the soap. So there's, there's not even a dispute for what trial size means, like the actual weight of the product was listed. So I got a little salty and was basically like, no, you can send them back to me on your dime and I will refund you, but ultimately this was your mistake like you didn't read that's that's not on me that's on you i could understand if for some reason i didn't have the item weight or it didn't say trial size on it somewhere how you could be mistaken but there was no mistaking that these were not full size bars of soap and where we left off with that customer in that video was i couldn't wait until she opened a paypal dispute because i knew she was gonna try the payment dispute route which is what they do when they don't get their way through the platform she of course did open a PayPal dispute, or I should say she opened a dispute with whatever bank she used to pay through PayPal. And then PayPal said, okay, here's your chance to tell your side, upload all of your information. So I did. And with arrows and annotation everywhere, that's basically like, look, it says their trial size on it. Here's the message the customer sent me that says they didn't know it was trial size. That's their whole issue. The only issue they've told me is, I bought this thing and I thought it was something else and it's, I didn't know it was actually this. It seemed like a real slam dunk case to me because how can you dispute, I didn't know they were trial size when all of the information in the listing and the photos clearly show that they are trial size. Like I literally walked into this thinking it was gonna be like open and shut case in my favor. I was completely shocked when I got the message that said, the bank has sided with their customer and we're taking the money away from you. I was like, why? What did I do wrong? <laughs> the item was accurately listed. 
trial size bars of soap. You got trial size bars of soap exactly as listed. And then you complained about that and you got your money back because you wanted a free return. Even though I did also put in my dispute that my return policy was clearly listed as no returns accepted because that, that's what I have on Bonanza. It just really frustrates me as a seller because you're put in these no win situations where whenever the customer complains to their bank that something was different, it's like you just lose automatically. And I know there are people out there who are saying like, I've won these disputes and I feel like if it was through eBay, eBay might have like reimbursed me because there was nothing I did wrong. But on Bonanza, there's no such seller protections. It seems they just do not care. Like I learned my lesson with the, you can't prove that it was working electronics thing because I couldn't, there, I didn't have any evidence that it did work. But I've also heard that you're screwed either way because just because you have photos of it working when you packed it does not mean you have like evidence that it worked when it arrived. Only the buyer has that. And I know a lot of people are saying, all you have to do is accept a return. And all you have to do is, is send them in your dispute, like a return label or something. But PayPal and eBay were both very clear when I had my disputes that the buyer is under no obligation to ever return the item to you. They specifically said that before I ever said it, before I ever um, put anything in with my dispute is the buyer is under no obligation to ever return an item. So why would you waste your appeal giving them a label when they're, they don't have to return it to you? There's no obligation. So the whole thing is just mind numbing because you, you can't win. As a seller, you're just doomed to lose almost every payment dispute. So I always try and learn something from these experiences. And I guess the only thing I can glean from this is don't sell on Bonanza because they have zero seller protections, it seems like. So even though if I would have sold this on eBay, it's possible eBay would have reimbursed me because I was, I didn't do anything wrong with my seller protections. But on Bonanza, no such thing. And that's really it because the item was accurately listed in every single way and it did not matter. It literally didn't matter. Like, I hate to be doom and gloom, but this can happen to you. Having a, an accurate description doesn't matter. Having a photo or video of the item working doesn't matter. Having an accurate title, having beautiful pictures that show all sides of the item doesn't matter. Thankfully, historically, this has not been a big issue. Um, like I said, this happens rarely once a year. And when it has happened, at least it's been under $100 both times. In this case, I'm only out $20. Um, but I found the soap with the bins, so I didn't really pay that much for it in the first place. I could have accepted that buyer's return as well. That's another thing I could have learned from. Um, but like the principle of it was, why in the world should I pay for you to return an item that you didn't read? Like. It just rubbed me the wrong way. But ultimately it probably would have cost me less because I could have paid to have my item back and then resold it again. But I don't think most viewers would fault me for just trying to take a stand and be like, nope, not gonna do it because the, the buyers are just crazy. They don't need any more, they don't need to be emboldened any more than they already are. And the second one seller rolls over and says, yes, let me pay you for your mistake. Like it just causes problems for the rest of us down the line. Anyway, that's my short little story about being scammed on Bonanza. Um, learn from it if you can, but it really just sucks out here to be a seller sometimes because it feels like no matter what you do, even if you're doing everything right, you're still gonna get the short end of the stick. Now get out there, have fun, find something good, and hopefully don't get a charge back. <laughs>